Hello traders, welcome to a new video on trapped longs and trapped shorts and how to take advantage of them. Have you ever been in a position where you buy and then price goes below and you don't want to sell? Have you ever been in a position where you go short and price goes way up and you don't want to cover your short and, and buy back? This is very normal. Now, we can go one step further into this. We can take advantage of the traders who feel like this. How? Well, you've come to the right place. Trapped longs and trapped shorts, and what does that mean? Let's say we see a candlestick of trading, right? And we, we have something like this, you know, we have three candlesticks down, and the current close price, meaning the, what, what price is currently at right now, is here. Well, this isn't the end of the story. This is something that you may see on a price action volume chart. You know, you, you see trading, of course. But what you don't always see, or what can be kind of hard to, to see sometimes, is what buyers and sellers have been doing at each of these price points. Let's say that there's a price point here where we see a ton of buying. Ton of buying. Ton of buying. And at that same price point, we actually also saw a ton of selling. So let me draw my lines this way. So really, at the, ugh, that was horrible. Okay, I can draw lines better than that. I'm not in kindergarten. Actually, a kindergarten student could probably draw better than me. I mean, look at this. Ugh. So, okay, enough about my drawing skills. So we see a lot of buying and a lot of selling here, market buying, market selling. But then let's also say that we saw a lot of selling here, and I'm going to do, okay, this tool is terrible, terribly great. Now, we also see a lot of trapped buyers here. Perfect. So basically, all that I'm showing you guys is setting up an example so you guys can see this. So we saw a lot of buying here, a lot of buying, and a lot of selling here, and a lot of selling here. Now, what happens when price is below a price point where we saw a lot of buying, and what happens when price is above a price point where we saw a lot of selling? Well, here's what ends up happening, typically. Let's say price begins to trade a bit higher, and let's say that there were $15 million worth of transactions around here. So 15 million longs or closed shorts. Now, what ends up happening is if price continues going a little bit beyond or in this level, these traders who were previously long and were holding losing positions are now profitable. Now what happens when a bunch of longs suddenly become profitable? Well, they want to sell. Some of them may be inclined to sell because imagine you've been holding a losing position for five hours, you've been watching the charts, and you're like, oh my god, finally I'm profitable. Let me get out of this immediately. Well, that's how a lot of these traders think. So what ends up happening is when price gets to this price point, you actually see that it reaches a zone of very, very strong supply, meaning a lot of people want to sell. What does that do? Yeah, price goes down. Now, let's say price goes back up again, okay, Ugh. badly drawn. Let's say price goes up a little bit higher, and then you say, oh, price must be just continue to, to go higher, of course. And then you see something like this, and you're like, what just happened, and why did that happen? Well, one reason why that may have happened is, yeah, what we see is some of the trap longs get out here, and they begin to sell, price goes down. Makes sense. Now, what we also see is any longs that we're holding out, and are, have now become profitable when price goes just a little bit above this high, now they're profitable and they're interested in selling, strong supply, price goes down. Now that's not the end of the story. Let's say that price goes down to here, and now we have this beautiful zone of trapped sellers. Guess what happens? Well, this can be a zone of very strong demand because if we have a lot of trapped shorts, what that means is that once these guys become profitable, a lot of them might be interested in buying. And if a lot of them are interested in buying at a certain price point, then it's going to be hard for price to go below that price point. So what you may end up seeing is a reversal. Because some of these some of these traders are, hey, I'm profitable now. I want to buy. And then what you may see is any shorts who are like, oh my god, price came right down to my break even and then went right back went right back up and I'm still holding my short. I really really want to buy back. Then what can end up happening is let's say price makes a secondary, you know, low here. Finally, I get to get out of my my unprofitable position. And then you might see something like this, you know, the strong, um, the strong demand holds and price goes up. Now, here's the fun part. Let's say price goes to the price point where we had a lot of profitable shorts and a lot of unprofitable longs. Okay, so price is at this candle here. What is the psychology behind the buyers and what is the psychology behind the sellers? Well, these buyers were holding trapped longs. They're, they're holding positions that were not in profit. They're probably going to be interested in selling if price goes a little bit more to put them in profit. But how about the shorts? What's going on? Well, let's imagine that these shorts hadn't closed their positions. What's going to go on through their heads once price begins to, to reach the point where they're now going to be unprofitable? Well, here's what typically ends up happening. 
you know, around here they may be covering, covering, covering. The shorts may be exiting their positions at a profit because they shorted here. They're covering here. Now, once price goes above their break even, they were previously holding a a profitable position. I don't think that they're going to be as inclined to just take a loss when they've been holding a very deep profitable position. So what does this mean in, in essence? Well, what this means is we have a lot of interested sellers. Let's see if I can draw this. We have a lot of interested sellers of these guys here, right? I mean, the, the longs who are now profitable, making them interested sellers, boom. And now what's going to happen with these shorts is they're now disinterested buyers. Well, why do I say disinterested buyers? Well, once price goes above their break even, they're holding an unprofitable position and it hurts to take a loss. Now, that means that they're not really interested in buying anymore, which means there's not as much demand. So there's less demand from these position sellers and there's more supply from these position buyers. What's price probably going to end up doing? Go right back down. This is taking advantage of trapped traders in the market. Now, if you're able to spot where these traders are probably trapped, what you can do is use limit orders to place, you know, one to two or, or maybe even two to three limit orders around these zones of trapped traders with a stop loss, of course, always use a stop loss, and profit off of these traders not being able to get out of break even, or profit off these traders getting out of break even. Now, what does that actually look like? Well, round two. No more drawing, time to show. So what we see here in the first example that I want to cover is the four hour candlestick chart here. Now I'm using the bid ask profile, just click it down here, and I'm also using embedded candlesticks here. So you can see that there's a candlestick, market buying on the right, market selling on the left. What are some patterns that we see here? I'm going to give you guys, I mean of course there's plenty, but I'm going to give you guys a test here. You see this candlestick here, right? You can see the buy, you can see the selling, yada yada. What's something interesting about this that actually had a very strong impact on the market? This is not going to be an easy question to answer unless you're in my Discord, but uh, I'll give you guys three seconds to really look at this candle and tell me what's going on. All right, answer's coming out, so, you know, say it now or forever hold your peace. Look at this. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me go here. But do you see all of that buying that occurred right there? There was a lot of buying at the price point of around 9700 to 9705. What did this candle end up doing? Well, notice that the next candle actually uh, it closed here, so it opened here, right? And it went up to here. It tried to go to 9700, but it couldn't because of all of these trap buyers, and price went down. So what ended up happening is these buyers may have taken profit at break even. They may have taken, you know, uh, no profit, no loss at all at, at pure break even, and price couldn't go any higher and anyone who hadn't done that is still trapped. Now what do we see pattern wise around here? Well, We can see another one. Look where the majority of buying happened in this candle, okay? I'm not going to point it out for three seconds, but the majority of this buying within a few zones or a few nodes as they're called in the volume profile happened at certain prices. Where are those prices? They're here. You can see that a lot of the buying was around here, around the 94.25 up to you know 94.32. Where was the high of this candle? Well, look here, price really had a hard time going any higher. Now let me show this four hour actually on TradingView. This happened between um, this happened at 12 o'clock onward. So let's go look at what was going on at 12. Was that today? Or was that yesterday? Uh, let me see, you guys. Wait, okay, now I'm confusing myself. Um, 28th of October, 12, this one says 16. Wait, what? I'm highlighting over this one, it says 28th of October, 12, but it says 8, 8 a.m. Okay, that's a little bit off, or maybe I'm not reading that right, but really what I'm interested in is the price point of 94.30 and how it became resistance, really. I can see that right here. I think that's it, yeah. So you can see that we had a lot of buying around here and price went up here and then immediately all those longs sold, right? And it happened again. Look at this other look at this other thing that happened at about 1150. And if I want to zoom in more, what I can do is go in the one hour and remove all ambiguity from all of these trap buyers. You can see here, okay, now I gotta find it again. It was that it was that beautiful 9430. Oh, there you are. I found you. Wait, is that you? 9460, no, that's not you. 
a lot of buying at 9400 that's going to probably become resistance as well um, okay this is just a time issue I'm like trying to find out like what time what happened but you guys I, I think you guys get the idea here but what you have to notice is the most important aspect of this is looking for trapped buyers and trapped sellers. So the current price is at 93.70. If I wanted to look at what is the biggest zone of trapped sellers, I would say it's probably around here, around you know 92.86 up to about 9300. There's a good amount of trapped sellers, which means if if price ever goes down to here, I'm expecting at least to bounce back upward. But if we get repeated bounces, you know, then price might go down, but I'm expecting that at least a bounce back upward is going to occur once we get to this 9285 to 9300 region because of how many trapped sellers there are, right? Now, we can also look at trapped buyers. Uh, you know, I see some trapped buyers here at around the 9400 level, right? Where do I also see trapped buyers? Well, these buyers here have not had an opportunity to take profit at break even. That is a horrible arrow. Come on, dude. Draw a better arrow. There you go. So you can see at the price point of come on where are you the price point of 9460 up to about 9470 these buyers have not had an opportunity to you know get out of their unprofitable positions that's from here to here so these guys have not had an opportunity to exit up at break even which means that i think extrapolating this to to this chart here that this is probably going to become resistance you know, it might be minor resistance with just one touch and then price keeps going, but it will probably be resistance. And I also think that down here with these trap sellers that we are going to see some support. But again, I don't know how many touches of support it's going to get. I don't know how many touches of resistance it's going to get, but I think that these trapped buyers are going to sell. And I think that these trapped sellers are going to want to buy as you can see here. Now we can also do this on a much higher time frame because I know a lot of you guys do like these these very very high time frames. Now you can even see the pattern right here. Look at just how much selling occurred here. My god. So much selling occurred here and so much buying occurred here. And where's the lowest price point that the next day's candle had gotten? Right at where all that selling had occurred because those sellers probably took profit or just pushed the market up because they want to get out of their positions, not at a loss. Beauty right there. And we can also see that a bit here. We have a cluster of a lot of selling and a cluster of a lot of buying too. And yeah, price wasn't really able to go beyond that, that, that region right there. And if I go to previous days, you know, you can see similar patterns as well. Uh, let me see a, a beauty of a candle. Just the, the this daily is very very zoomed out, but you can see it here. We have a, we have so much selling and so much buying here. So price wasn't really able to break this high. I mean, for a very long time. Look at this. Price couldn't go higher. Well, why? Well, these sellers are in profit, meaning they're probably not going to be interested in buying at higher prices because that would be at a loss. These buyers are in unprofitable positions, which means that if price ever went up to, you know, 82.20, 82.30, hey, these guys are now in profit and they may be interested in selling. So the interested buyers interested in selling and the disinterested sellers who are not interested in buying at these price points prevented price from going higher on demand. So price went lower. So this is the kind of thing that you have to look out for when you're actually doing this kind of volume profile analysis or really bid ask profile, you know. And you can see a bit of that pattern happen here too with that high. Um, okay, what, what do we want to go to? Let's let's go back to our trusty four hour to end up to end this video. What do we see here? Any other zones that do need to be talked about? Oh yeah. Look at this right here. A lot of buying that occurred right there, and that became about resistance here. You can see that we went up to there. Some of these traders came into profit, and then price went right back down. And then look again, price went right back up to this price point <clears throat> where a good amount of traders had had become profitable, and then price went right back down again. And then finally, on the third break, you know, we finally break it because enough of these trap traders have probably already exited their position, so we're not really worried about high supply. Okay, guys, I think that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys have any questions about really the theory behind this or the strategy or the application, any part of those three, 
then you can shoot me a message on Discord or you can shoot me an email. And if you want to learn more about this type of trading, really exploiting other traders in the market, then you can pick up one of the guides that I have for sale in the description below. With that, guys, happy trading. Find those trap buyers, find those trap sellers. And if you are comfortable with it, then you can begin to use this as support and resistance. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Happy trading. Bye-bye.